Hello out there, and I've got a knife mod video for you today, and just like every other knife mod video I've done, there are some wins, there are some losses, and there are some really interesting results as well. And so we're going to get into all this stuff, I'm going to do it one knife at a time, and sort of um, annotate down below where I start talking about each knife, so, uh, so that if there's anything in particular that you're interested in, you can just skip to that point. All right, but we're gonna just uh, start it off with the Pilar because I've done some Pilar work before and it should be relatively quick. And this Pilar is one that I was doing as part of a trade, a knife trade. And this is the last piece that I am sending this person and I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out. Looking at the acid stone wash uh, blade, what you can see is a little bit of a like a hexagonal pattern in here on each side. And so I wanted to do a two layer kind of etch. And um, in retrospect, I probably should have left the first layer in the acid for a little bit longer, probably like 40 minutes instead of 30. And then the second etch should have been shorter in order to really make that first, uh, that first hexagonal look more prominent. You know, it is very subtle. I like the fact that it's subtle, but um, it might be just a little bit too much on that side. But overall, Pretty happy with the way that it came out. And then, uh, as you can see, and if you've been looking at any of my mod videos, you probably know already that I really like to polish hardware instead of doing anything fancy with it. I just like the way polished hardware looks. So we did all that, and then bronzed the, um, the frame. And I think I learned from the past Pilars that I've done the, to just quit while you're ahead and you know if you're able to get that good bronze color especially with stainless steel just sort of stop there and don't try to push it for uh, for purples or blues because it really does not work out that consistently and this came out pretty good there are a couple imperfections you can see right there and then on the other side where um or there's just some unevenness in the way that the uh, the bronzing came out, and that probably could have been avoided by me, but uh, but I'm not sure. It just uh, just sort of happened, and um, yeah, it's not perfect, but still pretty happy with the result. And I hope that the uh, the gentleman that I'm trading with is really happy with this knife too. Should be shipping out uh, tomorrow. So that's the Pilar. And next, let's talk briefly about the Ontario Carter Prime. And this is a pretty cool knife, guys. I just got this one and got it lightly used and wanted to add just a tiny bit of flair to it. And again, as you can see, I polished all the hardware, the, the screws, the pivot, and the body screws, and then did just a little bit of anodizing on the, um, the clip and the titanium backspacer. Didn't want to mess with the frame, didn't think the knife needed it so much. So, you know, and I didn't do anything to the blade and I'm not going to. But uh, yeah, in order to get decent results on this, I had to strip the coating. You can see the same coating is actually on the uh, the frame itself. Had to strip the coating off in order to uh, to get the good colors to pop out. So if you're ever anodizing titanium or anything and there's like a coating on it, it might be pretty difficult. So I uh, got a little bit of blue and purple here and blue and purple matching up here. And yeah, good to go. No real issues and happy with the way this one came out. Just simple, a little bit of flair for it and on to the next one. And now let's talk about the Kershaw Pico. All right, we're going to save the CRKT Vizzle and the Spyderco Cricket for last because they sort of tie into each other. All right, but the Pico is one that I actually got a, uh, a message through YouTube from uh, a guy who won a giveaway, my holiday giveaway, uh, four months ago, I guess it is now, and um, when that giveaway was announced and the winners were announced, he never claimed the prize. He m missed the video, hadn't seen it, and he got in touch with me and had just finally saw that he had won and said, hey, is there anything we can do? You know, I had already given away the knife that was supposed to be his, and I said, you want to know what? I'm working on this Kershaw Pico, and when I'm done with it, I'd be happy to send it your way, and so that's what this is. All right, and this Pico I had originally bronzed, and then I stonewashed it, and it's not really picking up any of the bronze color that's left on camera, but it looks really neat with this like pocket-worn kind of stonewash and a little bit of bronze in there just sort of layered in. Um, yeah, I really like the result of that. And if, here, let's see if we can get this focused up here. If you can see the color of the uh, the liner that holds in the speed safe mechanism, that's the color that the entire frame was at one point before I stonewashed it. 
And so just a little bit of that bronze is still like floating around there, which gives it, like I said, that cool pocket worn look. Um, acid stone wash on the clip, and then another acid stone wash on the blade. And I tried again, um, this was actually done before the uh, the Pilar was, I tried to uh, to do that dual layer thing and and again, just didn't do that first etch long enough. And as you might barely be able to see, there's like this triangular pattern on the bottom. And again, very subtle, but I wish that it was more prominent. So moving forward again, I'll just have to adjust those times when I get to uh, the acid etching. One really cool feature I like about this knife is that at the top, I left the, uh, the spine completely unetched and polished. So it just gives it a little bit of a shine. And a little bit more character like that a lot one little note about this knife um, you know I just did my top five budget knives and talked about another Kershaw uh, by Les George from the same year the Weston which was my number one this knife though is really good too and it's really well put together um, just the fact that this knife and the Weston have bronze washers versus the uh, versus the Teflon ones that so many imported knives have it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference in the action and the way the knife functions. Um, just really happy with the way this one came apart and went back together. Uh, pretty simple, good results here. Uh, happy with that one overall. All right, and now let's talk about the Spyderco Cricket. And this was an interesting one. I'm saving the interesting stuff for last. All right, so number one with the Cricket, I got this knife used and it was sort of beat up. Um, the uh, the tip was uh, a little bit damaged and I had to reprofile that with a Dremel tool. And I decided while I was at it, let's try to give this thing some new life and give it a cool little bar acid etch, as you can see right there. And I did the same thing on the other side. There's a couple bars that the clip sort of um, blocks you from totally being able to see. But then on the clip as well, you can see I did some acid etched lines in that as well. All right. So here's what's interesting. If you're looking at this knife from above, you can see a color difference between one side of the frame versus the other. That was not intentional. I do not know how that happened. Now when you're doing an acid etch, and most of the stuff that I do, I stonewash afterwards, and I stonewash this frame. But when you stonewash, you end up getting this finish, this acid stonewash finish that is pretty popular that a lot of people seem to like. But you don't have to do that. If you take a knife out of the acid and then just take sandpaper to the etch, what, what it'll do is it'll remove the darkness of the etch and you'll have just the different layers. And that's what happened on this clip. That was intentional. I did that on the clip. Looking at another knife, another Spyderco, and this is one of the earliest etches that I've ever done. This is the, an old persistence of mine. You can see just another example of that. You know, you take the knife out of the acid, you take sandpaper to it, and then you have the texture from where the acid ate away the steel. And it looks pretty cool, right? It's not really a finish that I go with very often. I prefer to do an acid stone wash, but, you know, sometimes I go back and forth. The point here is that that's what happened on this side of the frame, and I didn't mean to do that. I mean, that the acid finish that color when I pulled it out of the acid it just wiped off and I don't know why I'm not sure what kept it from bonding to the steel as much as it as it usually would um, I'm really happy with the results I think it looks great and it took a, a beautiful stone wash I mean the stone wash on this is extremely attractive just take a look at that but I have no clue why this side looks like this and it didn't happen to this side at all None. I'm happy with the result, but I don't have an answer for why that would have happened. So if you do, <laughs> if you can think of anything, let me know because it's curious and something I've not really seen before. Now, all that being said, there might be a bit of an answer and it might be related to what happened with the CRKT Vizzle. And so we're going to move the Spyderco out of the way and bring the Vizzle in. And guys, this one was supposed to be the home run of the group. This one was supposed to be the knife that I was the most happy with. There was going to be uh, no real buyer. This was going to be added to my collection, and it still is going to be. But, uh, I mean, this was supposed to be the best result of all five of these. And as you can see right down here, we have a huge blemish that we're going to have to talk about. But before we do all that, let's talk about what was good. 
First of all, the best good was that my buddy Warpath101 uh, did some file work on this and added some jimping in order to make it a lot more comfortable in the hand, and that worked. I put a little extra polish onto the blade to give it a little bit more uh, reflective quality. I like the way that came out. And then I just went really simple with the frame. You know, I wanted to go bronze. What was really neat about this knife was that the, the, the uh, frame was already stonewashed and I was able to get a, a really good anodization through the stonewash because it was really nicely polished. So I mean, it just came out really good and it was bronze and a little bit of, uh, of rosiness in there and just some other colors that just jump out in the right light. And I was extremely happy with it. You know, my, um, my basic polishing all of the hardware kind of deal, I did that. Was happy with the way that worked out. You know, a little bit of extra color on this side, but yeah, overall really happy with the way that it came out. And then just yesterday, I mean, I probably finished this knife four or five days ago. Sorry for hitting the camera there. Finished this knife four or five days ago, and then just yesterday I noticed this. What is that? How did that happen? And I've seen that kind of result before. Uh, something like that has happened to me in the past, and I couldn't figure it out before. And I think I have the answer even though I don't know the science behind it, I think I can put two and two together and have it figured out. So that's what we're gonna talk about now, and that's why we need to bring the Cricut back in. Because the way that these two knives were stored waiting for me to make this video was, I know the Vizzle was closed, and the Cricut was open, sitting in a small box just to, uh, just to the side of where I keep the camera. And what I think happened was I think the Cricut was sitting with the serrations open, something like this, something in a way where the shape of that line matches up with the, the blade shape of the Cricut. Because if you look really close, and if we can get this focused, you can see these little dots in the middle of that line where I think the bottom of the, of the serrations were touching the metal. So how did that happen? I don't know, and I don't know why metal versus metal contact would cause the anodization to wear, but one thing that I noticed was that, let's see if we can get this, the Cricut is magnetized. So that blade has been magnetized, and so that's what I think happened, and I think that's what happened to uh, I, the CRKT Amicus that I worked on in the past as well, just bad storage. You know, just taking the knives and just, you know, I have a bunch of knives that I'm working on and when I put them all like next to each other in a little container to the side as I'm waiting to either film them or work more on them and that could definitely be it. And I don't, again, don't know the science behind it, but this being magnetized, could that pull the anodization out of the vizzle? Seems plausible and I'm sure somebody who's watching this hopefully has the scientific background to give me an answer as to how and why that happened. So that's my question for all of you because, again, I um, really wish this had been a complete home run with the Vizzle. Uh, love the way in general that it came out, and I think I'm still just going to carry it and use it for myself. Um, could probably take the whole thing apart and redo everything, but I would lose the stone wash, and that would be a bummer. So, yeah, just uh, some tough decisions, but interesting results and again something to learn from and that's always the point you know I do sometimes get decent results but I am an amateur when it comes to this stuff and I am trying to uh, to learn as much as I can so if you have any kind of insight when it comes to uh, to these things let me know I would love to uh, to hear from you about it or any comments questions complaints suggestions like I said as always would love to hear from you here are uh, the results just one more time of all those knives though bring them all back out one last time and that is going to be it, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time, and I will talk with you soon. Have a good one.